Welcome to the Family Farms Podcast. I'm Justin, and I'm joined, as always, by my lovely wife, Labry. Hey, y'all. Can you believe that it's episode five? No. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, one, feel like we've been doing this that long, but also just seems crazy that we've actually committed and been able to do this for five weeks straight. I know. Like, I am really surprised because it takes a lot to be able to set aside this time each week to do this. It just means staying up later. Yeah. And so. normally on a night after a night that we've already been up late because of church. Yeah. So two nights in a row is pretty rough on us. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. It is. <laughs> yes, the leaves are still falling. Yes, it's early. But in our lives, it's beginning to look a lot like a lot like Christmas. <laughs> and we'll get into that more in a second because that's kind of going to be the subject of our podcast today, as you probably assumed from the uh, title of this episode. But first, uh, Bree's been busy doing yes. some things on the farm this week. Yeah, I started some seeds. I have um, some lettuce seeds going, which I thought would be really fun to have um, a little supply of lettuce this winter. Uh, for salads and various things, I've got beans that are sprouting. I've got cilantro that I'm growing, and I'm growing more basil and a couple other herbs and things. All of which we're doing inside yeah. using a grow light, yes. which is something that we've never tried before. And I don't think we've talked about that in no. the other episodes, but we picked it up a few weeks back with the intention to do this. Mm -hmm. And we finally this week were able to sow some seeds. Mm -hmm. Um, in some containers and see what's going to happen. Yeah, I've got my whole little setup over there um, on the counter with just a few of the little terracotta pots that we have hanging around. And then I used one of our bigger flower pots to do the beans in because I did three um, in hopes that all three would sprout. But I want to make sure they have room if they did. But if they didn't, then whatever. Um, but I've got two sprouts so far, so that's really exciting. And the lettuce is coming up uh, real cute-like, and the cilantro is doing good. Um, basil sprouting, and I put some snapdragon seeds in. Those haven't sprouted yet. And then a, there's another seed that I can't remember off the top of my head um, that I sowed, and it's not come up yet, but still time. The goal really is to practice with start with seed starting more because last year was the first time that we ever did that and we had some success but not great success yeah it was a lot of issues with lighting because they got leggy and we're trying to reach and then i tried to repot them uh to where they were deeper but that meant they were stunted because they had to establish more roots higher up the stems mm -hmm. so they weren't as far along as they should have been yeah so we're trying but to take this as a time to learn more than anything yeah. um trying to figure out like what's going to work and what's not going to work and i mean that's the thing that you got to do but it's hard when you think about you only really have the growing season normally to try to practice these things but that's why we made the investment in the grow light to hopefully extend a growing season it'd mm -hmm. be great if these things do produce well yeah um, i'll be interested to see if the beans actually work or not yeah. but the cold crops should grow like lettuce yeah. should grow and we should be able to harvest lettuce from a pot in a mm -hmm. grow light in the house with no issues yep um, so I'm interested to see how all that's going to work out, but it's a good way to learn and to grow, well, to grow food, but to grow in our ability to grow yeah. food, to figure out what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. Um, the reason I picked the seeds I did is because they're all supposed to be container friendly. Um, first off, and they're cold crops. Um, and then the beans were just because like, why not see if this works? Yeah. So it's been a fun little experiment. I've enjoyed watching them grow over the week. Yeah. I'm always amazed with how fast that they come up and yeah. how they all look different. And like, it's always neat to me to see seed start. So yeah. It's I'm an really enjoyable enjoying time. it. You also were able to put together a little hide box for our rabbit Rose, yeah. the Angora that we've talked about multiple times on the podcast. Her hutch is different from our other two rabbits. They have a section that has walls in it mm -hmm. that they can go into when it's cold or when the weather's bad. Like they all have roofs and things, but yeah. they have a place that they feel sheltered. Mm -hmm. And in the hutch that Rose is in, she didn't have that. Yeah. And so we had makeshifted something uh, out of an old tub type thing, like a white tub. And it works for the quail. So mm -hmm. we've got three of them in with, well, one in each of the quail hutches, which we have three yes. of. 
And then we had one with, with um, Rose, but she would actually stand up and knock it over. Yeah. <laughs> every day. Every day you'd go out there and it was flipped over. So it wasn't really providing its purpose. I don't think that she would technically need a hide like that in there. But with winter coming and us not knowing whether or not, like, like how cold is too cold or, like, what's the wind going to be like, mm-hmm. it was just easier. And you, you built it while I was gone. Yeah. Like you, I gra- We have a bunch of... Uh, scrap wood scrap wood hanging around one from the previous owners of the house they left a bunch in the shed out here and then just from various projects that we've done mm-hmm. uh, since we've moved in but I just grabbed a few pieces of wood and I made this little box for her yep and the key is you never throw wood away yeah you could always use even the smallest piece for something later down the road and so We've adopted that philosophy, and thankfully the people who lived here before us had that philosophy, but they didn't think to take it with them. So yeah. we've definitely utilized the wood that was left behind at the house. It's been very nice having that for different things. Like I've ransacked that pile for almost every project we've done. Yeah. We also, it was fun to watch her like once we first put it in there because she immediately went in there and was like checking it out. Mm-hmm. Like This is a pretty cool place. It has gotten cold. Uh, this morning it was in the twenties and I didn't look out there on them this morning, but I did look at them, uh, like late s- Saturday night and early Sunday morning and they couldn't care less. Like yeah. all the rabbits, all the quail, they're all just out. The chickens were a little bit slower to come out, mm-hmm. but I don't know. It's just funny. That reminds me though. So a lot of people complain about this time of year when like, Oh, it just gets dark so early and all these things. But as somebody who, who goes to church and has chickens, it can be kind of a drag in, in the summer or in the longer day seasons mm-hmm. whenever you go to church and you leave the house and then you've got to come back at 9 o'clock at night on a Wednesday and still take care of all the animals. It's yeah. pretty nice now to be able to go down there before church, yeah. <laughs> take care of everything, lock the chickens up, and come home on Wednesday, and it's like a it's like a vacation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so much different than what it had been before that it's really nice. Yeah, especially back in the summertime when um, it wasn't getting dark until 9 o'clock. Mm-hmm. The chickens didn't want to go to bed yet. Like, I'm an old lady at heart. I like to be in bed at 9. So, again, that's another reason why this uh, podcast is, It's amazing to us that it's gone this long because we're doing this normally from about 8 to 9, 8.30 to 9.30. So we're cutting into my bedtime. But I'm sacrificing that for y'all so you can learn and grow with us. And I've really enjoyed it. Yeah. No, I've enjoyed it too. I think it's nice to be able to talk through things. Yeah. (laughs) But the – I forgot where I was even going where my train of thought went. That's because it's late at night. Oh, lock-in – no, but it's been nice to be able to lock everybody up at night and take care of things before service. And yes. then it also just feels like a little bit of a break to be able to have everything done, you know, so early in the day. Mm-hmm. And you're like, now what do I do? Yeah. Like, it is weird. It's our first, you know, winter in farm life. And it is an adjustment because you're used to go, 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 go from the moment I get home until like closer to eight or nine o'clock mm-hmm. when it's almost time to go to bed. And now it's 530 and it's getting dark outside. It's like, well, got to wrap this up and go lock go these animals in because it's going to be dark like yeah. we end up and when we take care of the animals at night you basically got a flashlight yeah <laughs> and that's how we're doing it right now because as we mentioned we want to put lights down there but haven't yet and so you're just flying in the dark trying to take care of all these different things yeah and it's nice for you because you wear a hat normally and you've got this little flashlight that you can put on mm-hmm. the bill of the hat and like it shines not so for me yeah uh, I'm normally wearing my mom bun, rocking that, so I can't really throw on a baseball cap with the little flashlight attached to it. So I'm like holding a flashlight in my mouth, trying to carry everything in one hand and the flashlight in the other. And like, there's a few pails that have to go down sometimes because you gotta feed the chickens, you gotta feed the quail, you gotta feed the bunnies, yeah. and you gotta make sure everyone has water. So you gotta take the pitcher down there. So it gets a a little bit of a juggle sometimes mm-hmm. yeah. yeah it definitely makes it harder at night yeah but we are also getting to the time when like this was now i did it earlier than i normally do tonight but that's because we had some things going on but uh, i didn't have any eggs this was the first time with as far as i could tell no eggs now they may may have laid but we had only been like yesterday was only one egg yeah, and the day before that, I think I got them and it was just two eggs. Yeah, so we're finally to that point to where like the laying and the production is 
abysmal, abysmal. There's no eggs. Yeah. And that's yeah. the basic, the easiest way to put it. We're getting it's to the time of the year where we're, we're getting like basically no eggs, which coming from the summer when we were getting like 15 eggs a day, <laughs> uh, that's a big, that's a big drastic change. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, thankfully it is nice to slow down because it was getting to be a burden of like trying to sell eggs and move eggs and eat eggs mm -hmm. constantly. But now it's like, man, are we going to have enough eggs for breakfast on, you know, the weekends and things yeah. or what's that going to look like? But yeah, because normally we don't eat a ton of eggs during the week for breakfast just because of the structure of our mornings. Yeah. Like it just isn't very conducive for that. But on the weekends, we like to wake up together and I make um, bacon, eggs. Now I'm doing an oatmeal with it. In the past, I've done pancakes and stuff before, but I like, we like to enjoy a big breakfast together as a family um, on Saturday mornings and Sunday mornings are a little bit more hectic, uh, a little bit more go, 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 trying to get yeah. everyone ready and get off to but church. But the other thing too, though, is like but, we're getting into baking season and now we're running low on eggs, which yeah. is kind of a bummer. We should have like, what is it, water glass some yes. eggs and tried that to see if it would work or not. But Next year, that's the plan. Yeah. I am going to be water glassing some eggs. That way we were able to bake continually through them because that's how we made our pumpkin pies already this year was mm -hmm. using the quail eggs. And yep. so we want to be able to continue to do that. But it seems like we'll probably end up having to buy some eggs at some point. Yeah. But it's not a big deal. Not a huge deal. I mean, we've gone months and months without them since now. Since we've had them. Since the quail started laying, yeah. we've not bought eggs. Yeah, it's been a long time. Like, I, when did they lay? Sometime early summer? Mm, like, I don't know. No, it would have been like August. August they were laying? I think it was whenever it was, I took that week off. I thought that was closer to my birthday, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I can't remember now. But, like, it's been a while. Yeah. And, like, it's been nice. I just walk by the egg section. Oliver's like, do we need anything from here? I'm like, nope, just keep <laughs> going. Yeah, that is nice to to be able to eliminate like one thing mostly from what you buy. Mm -hmm. um, we've also started uh, implementing some of the plan that we talked about last week for amending the soil. Yes. Which is surprisingly a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Having a bagging lawnmower or a lawnmower with the bag. We have a mulching lawnmower that could accept a bag, but I'm not really sure like what to buy because it's an older lawnmower that we borrowed from somebody else that's just willing to let us borrow it mm -hmm. indefinitely yeah it's kind of a weird situation very but, thankful for these odd situations like that yeah where, i'm thankful for it but it would be i can definitely see like why if we continue to live here for longer that mm -hmm. i'm gonna want a bagging lawnmower if i want to do leaf mulch for yeah. sure because it would just make life so much simpler mm -hmm. but we've we've started to do the front bed we haven't done the vegetable bed yet because we're still saving up compost and it's going to take a little bit longer to to work all that into the soil yeah but we have started working on the front bed and mulching leaves and leaves and more leaves, mm -hmm. shocking amounts of leaves. Because yeah. by the time you mulch them up, they are so small that it takes just a crazy amount of leaves. But I think we're finally done with that bed. Yeah. I mean, that lawnmower, it really gets it into a fine mulch. Like mm -hmm. some of the videos that I've watched on leaf mulching, um, when people are, are doing it with riding lawnmowers with bags, like that's a real chunky leaf mulch yeah i think it's because i go i end up because of the way it works i end up going over them more than one time maybe and so it makes it super fine yeah uh so it's taken a lot of leaves like yeah. we have taken all the leaves out of our front yard which is a lot mm -hmm. several times in order to get any sort of depth on that yeah. area but it was so. kind of funny though because the the first night that we did it we did a bunch of leaves and like had a bunch of the front yard and the whole driveway and everything was cleared off and then i go out to side to work the next morning and you would never know we did anything mm -hmm. because the trees dropped the same amount of leaves right back into the yard yep like it was almost humorous how many leaves that they had dropped yeah. back into the yard it, it's been crazy like and i've tried to keep up with blowing the back deck off and the front off just to one, keep everything kind of clean and safe mm -hmm. because when uh, leaves get wet, they're very slippery mm -hmm. and that's not safe for anyone. No. <laughs> um, and then it just allows us to get the leaves out of the areas that we don't want them and into the areas that we do and be able to use them for mulch. But like you work so hard on it, you spend two hours out there and then the next day, they're you all even back. 
Yeah, that's the what problem of having all these oak trees in the yard. Those are just everywhere. And then all the acorns everywhere still, too. Mm-hmm. But it's all good. Yeah. Glad to have the leaves since we're able to use them as mulch. And since mm-hmm. it doesn't seem like we're going to be able to get the wood mulch, I do think it's going to take a long time to do the vegetable garden the way that we want to. But yeah. we'll get there. Yeah, I mean, we might have to steal some leaves from the backyard. Yeah. To be able to do that. We've still got a ways to go in the trees. So yeah. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'll we'll just see how the winter progresses. Yeah. I mean, they're going to, these trees are going to be dropping leaves until they get new ones. So yeah. we got a while. Yep. So, but I mean, cause it's still like, well for us and it's kind of weird. So it's because of the trees that we have, these oak trees seem to hold the leaves so much longer. Mm-hmm. So they end up like, we had some leaves that made all the way to spring last year and like the, the new buds for the new leaves coming before they finally let go. But most all the other leaves around us are drawn. But it's something about these oak trees. They just cannot cannot let them go. But everywhere you look elsewhere, yeah. the, the leaves are all gone. It's just kind of funny. You look around us, you see bare branches. You look in our yard, nice, full, thick. And it was <laughs> green for a while. Yeah, it just recently, I over this last week, has turned brown on yeah. us. Yeah, and that's just because it's gotten really cold. And this yeah. whole next week is going to be really cold, especially for East Tennessee. I know there's places that are obviously colder, but it's in our no, area yeah. this is gonna be cold it's november and we're looking at in the next week being into the low 20s almost the teens as the lows and the highs not even breaking out of the 40s and not even the mid 40s really so. we get any precipitation we're gonna have some white fluffy snow that will make our child very happy yes i was gonna say that'll make it's gonna make oliver <laughs> really happy because ever since he's seen the first sign of christmas decorations he's like so it's gonna snow it's christmas it's christmas well, we're getting into the Christmas season. <laughs> it's Christmas. That's what he says every time. And we're like, dude, you can't open presents yeah. yet. Because that's all he's interested in is opening <laughs> presents. Because he already has a few things that we've gotten for him. But that's kind of the main thing today is that's kind of what our life's revolved around even a little bit more than farming is mm-hmm. it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas around here. There's yes. there's a lot of Christmas decorations. And, it and that's is my fault. Well, it, <laughs> Bree didn't want to start early. But the other side of the equation is that um even though we're a week out from thanksgiving right Mm -hmm. now a week and a half i guess out from thanksgiving we have a lot of christmas going on in the house because brie's a photographer yeah and i don't know if that's something we've talked about or not on the not entirely sure but yes i am a photographer so if you are local to the area and you would like to have a family session if you're in the greater knoxville area yeah hit me up Uh familyphotography.com family-photography.com yes um you can find me on instagram and facebook and all that fun stuff but um because i'm a photographer i've been prepping for christmas pictures for families um last year i set up at a christmas tree farm uh the weekend that we moved into this house yeah well that wasn't (laughs) known when we set it up though yes uh i planned that back in august and then out of the blue um like two weeks from october we found out we were closing the same weekend and everything i was like well it's gonna be interesting um so justin and some other people helped get everything moved well i stayed at a christmas tree farm all day but i did that last year and it was wonderful and i loved it and i would love to go back to the farm again but i wanted to offer some variety to my clients Mm -hmm. And not have them feel like they're just getting the same pictures every year um, with their kids, you know, growing up just a little bit more and all this stuff. So I don't want to like, you know, take your moment or anything, but I feel like I was kind of the one that was like, what if we buy trees and try to do like a setup that we can do ourselves? I feel like that was I had a, a hand in spawning that concept. We I think it came together because I was talking to you about the farm and I was like, I don't really know if I want to go back this year. And well, I know for one thing, I found the the good deal on the yes, Christmas trees back in the summer, uh-huh. and went ahead and sent that to you. And we bought four. Yes, we have bought four four foot pre lit Christmas trees at, in preparation. But they were ten dollars a piece. Yes, so it seemed I mean, like a pretty good deal. I personally, I think next year when that comes up, we're probably going to buy some more just because I'd like to buy taller ones after what we did this time. Yeah. And that way you could have people stand in them, but that's mm-hmm. neither here nor there. Yes. <laughs> it's just a side note. But yeah. So 
this year to offer something a little bit different. We wanted to have just a setup here at our house. Um, I told Justin my vision and he helped me make it happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, we got the trees, we hung lights out in our carport. We had a whole set, uh, with a bench and end tables and we had a record player and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, but the actual main day for these sessions isn't for another like two weeks, but December 3rd, in case you're interested. Yes. Um, and we had a, a family, a group of friends of ours, they specifically requested to do it earlier to just ensure that they had time to be able to print their Christmas cards from their select printer and all this stuff, whatever. And I was like, perfect, you'll be my uh, test subjects and I'll be able to get these shots and it'll help uh, advertise for mm -hmm. the session. In case you need to take a look, family photography on Instagram. They'll be up soon. Um, anyways. They'll be up by the time you hear this. Yes. This is coming out a week after. we. <laughs> it's coming out Friday. And so those pictures will be up probably tomorrow. Yeah. So. Um, but so I had to get everything out early so I could make sure I the setup was right uh, before they came over because I want to make sure it was going to look nice mm -hmm. when, for when I'm actually taking pictures. But then... We got everything set up out there, tested it, waited a few days, um, and now it was their time for their session tonight. So we had to take everything back out there and redo it. Yeah. And then bring it all back in. But we it's, don't it's pretty easy. I mean, yeah. like the hardest part is just like, I think the setup's a little bit harder because we kind of try to clean everything up yeah. and make it look better. I actually just remembered I've got to actually go do something else from where I moved things to the far side of the yard to mm -hmm. make it just more elegant for when people were over here so i'm gonna oh. go do that before we go to bed but it's not a hard setup no. to do. it just it takes a little bit of time uh because we're being peculiar and making sure everything looks just right yeah um but doing the setup and the breakdown also helps because it makes it look a little bit different mm -hmm. and that's kind of the hope too is we don't want like a lot of the people that are going to get pictures from us know each other yes um, hopefully there'll be, you know, several families that we don't even know, you know, that'll be new clients, but I've got a few, but several people are people that we don't know. So are sorry, excuse me, are several people that we do know and they all know each other and we don't want them to have the same exact Christmas card. So the hope is that we can modify things or decorations or yeah, tweak stuff just a little bit. Yeah, so give everybody a little bit of a unique feel. Mm -hmm. And that's really leads into my kind of thought is. You know, we want to be a farm and we want to raise animals and we want to work with animals and vegetables and foods and, and flowers. Like, honestly, like our minds are wide open to the ideas of what we could accomplish as farmers. But a part of that is, is you're passionate about photography. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people passionate about photography, mm -hmm. even in our area and all across the, the, the country, world, whatever. Yeah. And everybody is always looking for somewhere to take pictures. Mm hmm. And not just a studio space, which yeah. would be nice to have one day as a space that's inside and warm yeah. <laughs> to be able to do pictures like this. It was this. a wee chilly tonight. Yes. But at the same time, uh, the idea of having a farm is there's so many opportunities for farmers to make an income through photography, whether you're a photographer or not. Mm -hmm. you, can either, you can either be a photographer and be able to set up your own outdoor studio space and yep. do your own whole ideas of photography, whether that's utilizing a attractive you know rustic barn rustic you know even farm equipment is yeah. popular for some people's photography but at the same time if you grow wildflowers or sunflowers because regardless of what kind of crops you want to grow you can plant all the vegetables that you want to if you're working on a small scale you're still going to need to attract pollinators mm -hmm. by having you know some kind of flower yep. beyond just the flower that your vegetables put off mm -hmm. and if you're smart and you either plant a large you know uh Patch. Patch, I guess is what I'm looking for, of mm -hmm. wildflowers. And especially what you want to do is almost create a path in between. So yeah. nobody has to walk through your flowers, mm -hmm. whether that's sunflowers or wildflowers. But if you can create a path in between mm -hmm. where the photographer stands on one side and gives the illusion that you're standing in the middle of this field, yep. but you don't have to worry about your, your flowers being, being damaged, damaged. And they can be used multiple times by mm -hmm. multiple people. And I think that's something that I really like the idea of. And I'm a you know, extremely aware that you're really liking the idea of that too. But being <laughs> able to utilize reasons. it. Yeah. The flowers, the pictures. Huh. 
but like being able to have our own photography space one day on our own land would be great. And then yeah. still, you know, making it an affordable, usable space for other people yeah. to be able to accomplish the same things because there's one or two places. There's one place that we know of that people really enjoy that is affordable mm -hmm. um, in our local area, but I don't know of many other places that are usable and affordable. Yeah. Like a lot of places are becoming a little ridiculous with their prices. And if you want to go about things that way, that's your business and that's you yeah. know, your own thing. But I mean, if you can get people to pay it. I mean, good for you, but I, I want to make, family pictures, an option for every family, mm -hmm. not just for those that are wealthy. Yeah. It's kind of ridiculous when you look at what family pictures cost. Yeah. And, and, and especially the better the setting is because cheaper family pictures oftentimes are in places that are not as glamorous maybe. Yeah. Because that's just, you have to find a place that you're allowed to take pictures for free. And that's kind of just sad for some of those families that it's just not in their income to be able to have a moment together and captured in time that, that looks good. Yeah. And I know a lot of people claim that they can do just as good on their cell phone as professional photographers today. And you may be able to capture picture quality, but mm -hmm. I truly do not believe that you can capture the same image that a person with the right eye, the right artistic ability mm -hmm. and the right way to, you know, stop time yeah. to, to manipulate time almost to manipulate the what's going on and where they're at mm -hmm. is a very difficult skill. It's not as easy as just whipping out your iPhone and taking a picture, even though your iPhone camera today is very powerful. Yeah. But I personally also still, as somebody who's dealt with cameras now and seeing the difference between a full frame camera mm -hmm. that we use professional grade cameras and compared to even an iPhone, the iPhone is very impressive, especially for something you carry in your pocket, mm -hmm. but it still does not compare to the depth yeah. of the image of a full frame camera. And this might be terrible of me to say as a photographer, but like the pictures I take on my phone, like that's nothing. I, oh my gosh, that looks so terrible. Yeah. But the camera, you give me that. And oh my gosh, the world just explodes. Yeah, you can tell the difference. There's such a huge difference. You can't tell the difference in an Apple ad <laughs> because they're not just pointing and shooting a phone. Yeah. They're doing what you would do with a DSLR, mm -hmm. but through the iPhone. Yes. And 99% of the iPhone users are not going to do that. No. They're just going to point and shoot and they don't know the angles even mm -hmm. that are best to take pictures. And a lot of people nowadays have taken it to the extreme of like shooting high, mm -hmm. like of shooting a mile high and still giving you a strange image, even if it does make you look thinner. Yeah. But that's not even over there. But the idea of the photography farm is something that I think would be really neat. Mm -hmm. And it kind of goes along with what we want to do. And I didn't realize this mm -hmm. until we started looking into it. But we have, you know, rabbits, we have chickens and quails and things mm -hmm. and things that people, especially around like Easter. Yeah would be interested in having their picture taken with. Mm -hmm. But those animals, you can't just have your animal go take a picture with somebody. Yeah. You can take a picture of somebody with their animals, yes. no problem. Mm -hmm. But if the animal is owned by you or even a third party, yeah. that animal has to be licensed with the USDA. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if other photographers take enough time in researching that to know that. I do wonder, like, because we see the same thing with the national park and like uh, in our area, we live in near the great, we live in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains yeah. and uh, we have the Foothills Parkway, mm -hmm. which is a national park park. Yes. Like when you're on the Foothills Parkway, you are technically in the national park. Yep. To be able to photograph professionally in the national park, you have to have a special license. Most people either don't do the research to find that out. Mm-hmm. Or ignore it, ignore it, assuming that they're not doing a big enough business for the national parks to take notice. Mm -hmm. Personally, not a fan of that. I don't yeah. like to roll that way. And that's the same thing with the animals. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to utilize the rabbits in the future, I'm going to make sure that they're certified through the USDA. Yeah. I think it's a silly process. Mm -hmm. I understand where it's coming from for the rights and the protection of the animals to mm -hmm. make sure that they're kept safely and humanely yeah. and not being used cruelly. However, 
it seems odd to me that to utilize it for a photo or a video, mm -hmm. we have to go through that process. But for somebody to be a breeder yeah. and constantly sell animals, mm -hmm. even at a commercial scale, they yeah. don't have to go through the same things. Yeah. Seems That's odd. Right. And it also seems like a waste of taxpayer money because the license is $40. Yeah. And that's an annual fee. But the first time that you do that, the USDA agent has, has to, to come, come out. out to your home and inspect and inspect everything. How is that worth $40? Like, yeah. it seems like it should cost more. I'm glad it doesn't cost mm -hmm. more because we obviously want to do yes. that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, as like a taxpayer, I'm like, it seems silly to me that we're using our USDA funds for this. Yeah. You know, our taxpaying money that goes into certain organizations like that. That just seems odd to me personally. I don't yeah. know. Seems like a waste of time and a waste of money. Yeah. But it is what it is. Um, but yeah, we do plan to take advantage of that. Uh come spring and Easter mm -hmm. time and all yeah. that, Jess. I'm Please. curious to know some certain questions I have about like I can't remember the number, so forgive me, but your $40 covers so many animals and then there's an extra fee for more animals. Mm -hmm. But in that, I kind of wonder what the rule is about like if you want to use chicks or if you want to use baby bunnies, how you get those on there. Do they have to come back out and reinspect once those animals are born? Because obviously we're going to sell rabbits around the time. Now we're not going to do the Angoras at Easter no. because that's not a good pet for a child. No. And we're going to make sure that our bunnies are fully weaned and of a good age to where they're not mm -hmm. going to be easily injured. But we want to be responsible as we can. But obviously, we're going to take advantage of the season and sell rabbits at that season because they're going to sell. There's no fear. There's no yeah. worry that that litter is going to move when you're selling them around Easter. Mm -hmm. um, but my question is, can those animals, how can, like, can I also use those baby bunnies that are, obviously the big rabbits are cute, but people love little rabbits. Yeah. Can I use those for photo shoots or like, what's the deal with that? And then as the farm grows and if we get land and things like that and have the photography farm, mm -hmm. if, if we end up with sheep, yeah. obviously people would love to have a, a lamb mm -hmm. in their pictures or even a goat yeah. or, you know, whatever. And especially if we have like the, the dream truly is to grow food yeah. and to su support ourselves and to have an income from a farm based business. Mm -hmm. However, I'm not opposed to the idea of being like the family fun farm of where people come for farm type stuff yeah. to see the farm, to see the animals, to interact mm -hmm. and if get you their want picture taken. to get your picture <laughs> taken, we have a professional far photographer here all the time, Yeah, you know? So, uh, yeah. I mean, that is just, that's the dream. Mm -hmm. It really is because I love capturing moments for families so much and I mean, yes, we kind of capitalize on the family thing because of our name and whatnot, but that's truly what everything's about for us is mm -hmm. the family, not only ours, but I love capturing those moments for other families and to one day be able to offer experiences like that and pictures of that experience yeah. to be able to have that forever and ever and ever be able to show your grandkids and it's just uh, a dream i would love to do it it yeah. would make me so happy well and like that's the thing is it's inspiring you like to capture joy mm -hmm. i personally enjoy the inspiring joy yes so i like to cause people to have joy and so we had a, that family here to do pictures today mm -hmm. i know the little girl and I know how much she loves animals mm -hmm. because I've seen her interact with even a hamster in the past yeah. <laughs> and treat it like it was gold, right? And so, of course, they're here. I kind of sneak off and I go get one of the rabbits mm -hmm. to bring it up to her and it just made her evening. Yep. And so did the cat, you mm -hmm. know, just, just the, something as simple as a cat. And so the idea that we could inspire joy on a farm level one day and, and you're, you know, you're still teaching yeah. through that. You're teaching people like, you know, Look at these chickens. These chickens have this purpose or do mm -hmm. this, or this is this unique characteristic about that, as well as like, look, this is an Angora rabbit. Mm -hmm. This rabbit produces wool that can be used for things while this rabbit's good for that. And they all have a purpose on the farm, but they also inspire joy mm -hmm. in, in not just in children, but in adults yeah, as well. Yeah, like the parents lit up. Like it was just so much fun. 
And you even had the opportunity tonight to teach uh, the little girl about the rabbit. You're like, no, you got to be careful. Look, her the bunny's claws are out. So you might get scratched or let's do this mm -hmm. kind of thing. And even when she was holding the cat, like, okay, let's hold the cat like this and make sure you're supporting it so it doesn't want to jump and these different things. It's kind of sad to me to think about the amount of children that grow up and don't have any experience mm -hmm. with animals, whether it's livestock or just pets in general. Yeah. Like, this I've little girl really has a, a large, I, I guess a large dog because our dog's an extra large dog. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but a large dog at her house. So she gets that interaction, but it's just. But everybody sees a dog, but the amount of people like that have never interacted with like a chicken yes. or with mm -hmm. a rabbit or with these different animals. It's like, it's, it's such a special moment because these animals are so unique and interesting yeah. and, and they provide such a great service to mm -hmm. people, you know? And yeah. I just, I think that that's something worth sharing with people. And, mm -hmm. you know, the photography thing too is, as a farm, as somebody, like, the thing that you can do is such a great business model. Mm -hmm. And the more that I've looked into, like, business models and things that you can do, it's like, yeah, you can you can sell soap or you can make candles or you can, you know, be, uh, uh, what do you call it, like a farm market seller. Yeah. Like you can grow things to take them to market and you can be at market every Saturday selling your wares and you can make a good living and you can, you know, make an income that supports your farm. Yeah. However... The same thing can be said for photography. If you have the acreage, you mm -hmm. have the facilities that people like. Yeah. I we've looked at vehicles that mm -hmm. we've considered like and we want a third vehicle. Yeah. But I also want something that's just classic, older, and just doesn't have all the bells and whistles for the sheer fact of like I, I I'm seeking simplicity yeah. in certain things. Which is kind of an ironic thing to say as you're recording a podcast <laughs> through technology to put on the internet. But I want to seek simplicity. And a part of that though is like this vehicle can mm -hmm. be an investment. Yeah. And so your farm can be an investment, your mm -hmm. machinery, you know, like if you're a small farmer, maybe don't get a Kubota, maybe mm -hmm. get like a pretty cool older tractor that one, you'll be able to fix yourself. Yep. Two can accomplish all the tasks that you need to. And three look can, cool in pictures that might be able to be utilized by somebody that's a photographer. Mm -hmm. You'd be amazed if you're, if you're like the true, like, you know, just rule, you know, you're kind of disconnected farmer type person that doesn't like get on the social media and things like that. You would probably be amazed about what city folk yep. are wanting in their pictures. Mm -hmm. They want to look country yep. and experience country, but they don't want to own country. Yep. But you own it. You and own you it. You have the ability to use that as a business model. Exactly. Like there's this one particular um, property that I would love to be able to go take pictures at but their pictures like their rental fee for the hour is as much as my photography package yeah. like that doubles the price for the customer and therefore makes it unobtainable to a lot of the people that i i want to reach like mm -hmm. i could charge and way high and you can make a lot of money and hit a certain clientele but like i said i want this to be accessible for everybody and that's the thing that kills me is like so that farm i don't even know exactly what you're talking about mm -hmm. but i i know businesses like that and you can you can price yourself into a certain clientele and you're going to make good money but that doesn't mean that you'll make the most money mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean that you'll have the best success or the best usage. Yep. Now it's also possible to price yourself in a category that you don't make get, money that you don't get as many clients yeah. because they view you as a lesser product. Mm -hmm. However, there's a farm that I remember hearing about in Canada and they're a sunflower farm. Mm -hmm. I believe it was Canada and they decided we're going to open up to let people come here and take pictures. And they or letting anybody come take pictures, whether that was them taking pictures of themselves with their selfies or like, you know, phones or professional photographers coming. And I believe they only charged like $5. Mm -hmm. They had to shut it down because so many people were showing up. They were blocking the highway <laughs> and they were trampling the crop. That yeah. they, I don't know if they were selling them for bird seed or whatever, but yeah. that was their crop. Mm -hmm. But by doing it at $5, people were flying to this place. Yeah take pictures in these massive sunflower fields you don't need a massive sunflower no. field because it's all about perspective mm -hmm. for one 
but that can be utilized and it would make you a killing by lowering the price and yeah. giving a, a lower barrier to entry because I hate to say it like this, but like most every woman <laughs> wants this this thing. Yes. You know, like I don't know if I don't know if it's a if it's a national thing or not, but living in the south, living in the <laughs> east, Biltmore yes. is a thing mm -hmm. and it's a big thing. It's a big, big thing. And every woman wants to go to Biltmore. Mm -hmm. Every woman yep. wants to go to Biltmore because it's even it's if class. you've gone several times, you still want to go back. Well, you know, I have to go at least four times because I have to see all the seasons. <laughs> and they put on different like, um, what what do they call it? Like exhibitions. Yeah, I would different say. exhibitions. Like they had like uh, something to do with Downton Abbey mm -hmm. last Christmas. I don't know what they're doing. They had um, some royal like royalty clothing like through the years there um, in one year. I just there's so many great things to do there but, but we're not doing experience. a podcast about Billmore but my point is that like most women want this yeah you know and so if you can capture that and be able to sell it now obviously your barn if you're going to do this can't be you know ugly it can't be a <laughs> shanty it can't have massive weeds growing up like you're going to have to take care of things yeah. and make things look presentable and look good in photography mm -hmm. but it would definitely be used and especially the animals yeah. You can rent animals. Mm -hmm. You can rent animals. You can rent your vehicle. And whether that's for photography, to let somebody drive 20 feet off in their wedding literally blows my mind. People will rent your classic car, yeah. like, you know, 50s, you know, coupes or trucks mm -hmm. and things to not even actually drive away from their wedding, to yeah. drive like around the block. Yeah. But pay good, good money. money for it, mm -hmm. you know? You've just got to price yourself in a way that it's worth it. Yes. That it's worth your time. But if you're going to be at your farm mm -hmm. and you're going to be, say you just set the times mm -hmm. that you're going to be there. So say if you're, if you always are going to be at your farm Monday through Friday, eight to five, and even on Saturdays, eight to five, mm -hmm. right? Like you just plan on being there. And it's not a big deal for you to be there. Yeah. And you say, Hey, you know, between eight and five o'clock, if you want to come one hour is 50 bucks, Yep. then you're not. It's not taking anything away from you. Yeah. You All know? it's doing is adding in. Yeah. It's just adding another revenue stream that mm -hmm. that could become something bigger depending on how you build out for like because our plan personally is to design for photography. Yeah. So when we get land, we're gonna be looking at it through that eye of how can we set this up to look nice. And we're not looking for built more esque estate no. gardens or oh man, what was the name of the one in Pennsylvania that we went to? Oh, Longwood. Longwood. Beautiful mm, garden. The, stunning. If, if you know what Biltmore is, yep. then Longwood would be the inverse of Biltmore, where the gardens are massive and beautiful. And the house was very nice, yeah. but just not that big. And if you know what Longwood is, the house at Biltmore is ridiculously wow. large. Like, and the gardens take your are, gardens and make it the house. Yeah, and then vice versa. <laughs> and then the gardens at Biltmore are extremely nice yes but nowhere near the size and vastness yeah. that were longwood oh my gosh and there were so many different areas like the different gardens that were in there they had the wildflower area they had the uh, oh, they had like the italian gardens the water yes. gardens oh. the big topiaries like they that garden literally had it all oh but i could have spent days there but our plan isn't to, you know, do that. And you don't have to do no. that. But you can do such little things yeah. that make a big impact. Even, like, if you've watched uh, some of the different um, farm accounts on YouTube, like where they have the raised beds and they do the cattle panel mm -hmm. over and grow something above to that, people would pay to come take their picture in your vegetable garden. That's yeah. pretty. I think you could honestly sell harvest packages yep. to people. <laughs> Whether that's you being a photographer or letting somebody utilize it. And in the process, like you'd have to factor in this, but you could sell some of the produce. Yeah. Like they come pick it and get their picture taken picking it. Mm -hmm. And people would be thrilled. Yeah. Like it's just weird. It sounds bizarre. But it they sounds would do strange. It. But weirder things happen every day. Yep. And people are interested in farm life and we live it and we know what people are interested in because mm -hmm. it's a good life and it's a fun thing to do. It's yeah. enjoyable. Um, to capture those moments, especially mm -hmm. though. Yes. So, but, you know, that's just, that's what our, our desire is, mm -hmm. you know, down the road. And, you know, 
uh, that's why we want to talk about this episode is because a big part of our farm plan is to utilize it for photography yep. in multiple ways. And we actually know a lot of photographers. Yes. Just we- by chance. It's not like we have joined any kind of like photographer community as much as like our church is just filled with countless, countless photographers. Yeah. And then through just different life um, connections, we know others as well. Yeah. Like it's crazy how many we're connected with. And to one day be able to host an area that would be beneficial to me um, and to our farm, but also to all of these other people mm-hmm. would be nice. And another thing too, though, is if you if you've built your farm with the ability to be well photographed, mm-hmm. chances are somebody yep. is going to want to get, would be interested in, I yep. won't say is going to want to, but would might be interested in utilizing it as their wedding venue yeah obviously nobody wants to get married under the sounds of you know animals <laughs> like like intense animals like well they don't, i mean someone might someone might but like most people aren't going to want their ceremony interrupted by a moody cow chicken <laughs> you know like you're gonna have to have space to like have animals not right on top of the have ceremony. Your, where uh, wedding ceremony area but depending on how much land you have these are viable options yeah. and things that i'm definitely interested mm-hmm. in obviously our five acre dream farm that we've talked about previously is more suitable for just the photography yeah. like obviously you could probably host a small wedding but that is elopement that's going to be <laughs> way more of an inconvenience on you though. yeah like totally and i don't know about that but i definitely definitely want to chase the dream of being farmers raising animals for profit whether yeah. that's selling them at you know different auctions or whatever or selling their products at different things mm-hmm. and and being able one to provide for our family yeah those are the two main goals of the farm but then with that we want to build it out in such a way that we can utilize multiple revenue in streams yeah. and one of those being photography because it's one of your passions yes and it's something that it's not like I didn't just one day wake up and was like, oh, I want to take pictures because these people take pictures. Literally, since I've been a child, I wanted to be behind the camera taking the pictures. Mm-hmm. Like, I, if there was a camera around, it was in my hands. So to be living this dream, like we keep my business pretty small right now uh, for various reasons. But when it comes to the five acre dream, like we'll have to readjust uh, yeah. some of the structure. <laughs> yeah. In the, this. I mean, if we get to that point and, you know, like things are kicking then mm-hmm. then that changes careers for everybody. You yeah. Know, would be the, the hope and maybe the podcast or if we eventually get to do the YouTube thing, mm-hmm. all that takes off. And then, then it'll be a whole different world yeah. of, you know, opportunity and where life leads. And that's the nice thing about doing the podcast and, and dreaming like mm-hmm. we really are today. I mean, like, Obviously, she's already doing photography, and it's looking a lot like Christmas. I didn't even get to mention that yet, but our whole house is Christmas now on the inside because we can't. We can. We can, but we choose well, not to. But it's going to rain tonight, hundred okay. percent chance. Oh, but we watch it not. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but we choose to not uh, leave all these things outside, and so we bring them in. And obviously, having a three-year-old, he's like, "We got to plug these up." Yeah. So they're plugged in. Yeah. And so it looks like a lot like Christmas in the house, mm-hmm. but. We're already doing the photography thing, but it's nice to be able to sit here and to dream and to think about things mm-hmm. and to talk about things because if we continue to do this like we have and we continue to do it for, for even years to come, mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see if we make it. Yeah. What it, you know, and maybe that's a podcast episode that we'll do at the end of the year is what our predictions are for next year. Oh, yeah. And then we can go back at the end of next year and listen to that and talk about what happened and. What are our predictions for the next year? Yeah. Because I think that would be an interesting concept of mm-hmm. like, you know, thinking about how things went and doing a year in review and yeah. seeing how things have changed and having to document that for ourselves even. Yeah. You know, that's something that's beneficial that a lot of people wish that they had. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's definitely worth it. Some people keep a journal. I'm really bad at that. I've tried. Yeah. I, like, even as a kid, I tried to keep a journal or something. A little something. heart lock on there, you know, a little key that you locked it with. <laughs> Um, I tried to, but I'm terrible. Like I even, I love the idea of a physical planner and like making pretty things in it and doing like the bullet journal type stuff. But I, I, it's just not something that really fits well with me. No, we're better talkers. Yeah. And that's the thing is 
all of this may happen. Yeah. And more. Mm-hmm. None of this may happen. Yeah. Life may take know. us a different direction. Who knows? There's a project that we were talking about really serious since the last episode mm-hmm. that we were pretty sure we were going to do. And as we got into it, we realized we're a little late to the, the party on yeah. the seasonally. Um, we'll maybe talk about that in the future because mm-hmm. we still have plans to possibly pursue that project. Yeah. But we got really in deep in conversation about it and like for a couple of days and we're planning and thinking mm-hmm. like set on this is what we're going to do. And then we realized maybe that's not what we're going to do. Yeah. Maybe we should hold off on this just a little bit and, and we still kind reevaluate of reevaluate. Yeah, need to get on it. Or so. Because of like needing to, you know. Prepare. Prepare and get things together mm-hmm. to be able to do it. But, you know, that's the thing about this is this is just an opportunity for us to talk. And this might not have been the most educational. Or maybe it was. Maybe you didn't realize that you could use yeah. your farm for photography mm-hmm. for other people. Yeah. And that people would truly be interested in that. I think you would be amazed. Um, You know, if you keep your stuff relatively clean Mm -hmm. and organized and you have places that you find beauty in, Mm -hmm. others are going to find beauty in that too. And why hold it to yourself? Why build bigger barns when you can share with other people? Even if it's not a physical item that you're giving them, but you're giving them an experience and a moment and a way to capture something. Mm -hmm. I think that's worth it. A a friend of a friend of ours that has a farm about 30 minutes from us, uh, they were considering trying to open up their farm to photographers and stuff like that and one like we've talked about trying to go out and visit their farm anyways for multiple reasons Mm -hmm. um but in that like i would like the opportunity to go around with them and be like okay this is what you can market your property as yeah to photographers um just because they just don't know and like what are the going rates for yeah. it like just different stuff that and that don't depend on where you're at too mm-hmm. are you close to a hub like yep. a major city or not a major city but like a decent sized city yep or are you like way out in the boonies mm-hmm. that will dictate your what's who's going to come in yeah i will say because i just thought about it we talked about wildflowers and sunflowers mm-hmm. and barns and things but if you have a cornfield, yep. if you have an open pasture field that you mm-hmm. let the grass grow up in, yep. we know there's snakes, you know there's snakes. They don't have to know that there's snakes. Yeah. <laughs> and, but like you could do that. You can have little liability waivers. You need. Super smart. The, not can you. have. You need. And that's what we had to do with the Christmas tree yep. farm. And it's to protect yourself because mm-hmm. sadly we have a lot of unscrupulous people nowadays mm-hmm. who are looking to take advantage of even a small place like yeah. that. And that's just the truth. You can it. find templates online. Yeah, like, it's really easy. You can go to Legal Zoom if you want to get like real serious about yeah. it, and it's super easy. But you know, if you have a cornfield, if you have an open hay field that you're growing up, mm-hmm. if you just have an open field that's mown, yep. Like if you have a tree line that's nice, mm-hmm. if you have, you can plant uh, some Christmas trees. Yep. Then you're getting double money. You could be a small Christmas tree farm. Mm-hmm. You could grow you know, anywhere from five, if you just want a backdrop for Mm -hmm. people to take pictures with, or you could grow 20 and you could have a nice big area for people to take pictures in and then just cut them and sell them. Yep. It's, it's that easy. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want to, I just thought about those other options. Like we were pretty specific before, but like there are so many, so many things. And I'm sure there's stuff that we're not even thinking about. If you search like farm photography on the internet, Mm -hmm. I'm sure you would be amazed by like what people are doing. And we said like run down barns. I just mean like on the it's ground. It's got weathered. But you want weathered yeah. because like you there's want a beautiful, wood. like if you just have a side or that's even nice painted, wood, like anything. A nice painted. Yeah. yeah. You just don't want it, you know, collapsing. Yeah. You don't want it looking like trashy. You want it to look like trashy sheet. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's a weird way to look at it. But I guarantee you, if you like search farm photography and you see what people are doing, mm-hmm. you could think like, wow, I have a lot of this stuff that I never thought anybody would want their picture taken with, but that they, they do. do. And they'll pay decent money for an hour on your farm. Mm-hmm. Now you are obviously opening yourself up to people coming in. This is what you have to remember. And this is why I'm not too worried about having people come to my carport. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to invite or allow all these people into my home. They're yeah. going to be here for less than 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. And they're going to come in. They're going to just see our carport, mm-hmm. maybe see that we have a boat, which anybody who drives by my house can see that I have a boat. Yeah. But they're going to come in. They're going to see that and they're going to leave. They don't yep. know what you own. They don't yeah. know what valuables that you have. Mm-hmm. It's not like you're opening up your life to a bunch of strangers. And listen, 
bunch of city folk don't know the price of your farm stuff. Yeah. They don't correlate. People, if people are truly, <laughs> no thief is putting in that amount of legwork to pay you to come out. To come out. And, get and your then stuff. <laughs> thinking that I'm going to invest $75 to come steal more from them. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's just not going to happen. And if you do feel uncomfortable with it, it's very easy. You're going to make money relatively quick. Put mm -hmm. a gate down at the bottom of your driveway. Yep. You, there's all kinds of sensors you can get. You can even get driveway alerts, which I recommend to anybody mm -hmm. that lives on a long driveway on like a, a decent acreage. Yep. You should get that so you know when somebody's rolling up to your house at any time of day. Yep. But get an automatic gate. Get some kind of gate mm -hmm. that you get to choose when people come onto your yep. property, if that's something that you're worried about. But I don't think that in a sense like this, in that circumstance, that that's really something you're going to have to worry about. Mm -hmm. Having people come out for free, obviously you might have to worry about people scoping you out or taking something with them. But people rarely are going to show up and also pay you to take your stuff. Exactly. And you're a farm business. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're probably bringing people onto your property to sell something at multiple anyway, points yeah. of time anyways. So it's probably not a big deal to you. But if it is, there's ways to get around it. Also, if you want to. Mm -hmm. Like you can get whatever information you want from them. Like when we did our one, they had to have every client, not just the photographer had to fill mm -hmm. out the liability sheet, but every client had to fill out the liability yep. sheet. So you had names of the entire family mm -hmm. on that sheet. Yep. You could even ask for photocopies of IDs if you were really that concerned yeah. about somebody. And then you would know. And listen, they're all going to do it. They're all going to get you that information. Because they want you the pictures. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's just a straightforward thing, but. Uh, I kind of hope that we've maybe inspired somebody to think about that a little bit more, mm -hmm. whether or not, and even if you're not farming, maybe you have an old truck, maybe you have this or yeah. that. And like, you could utilize these things to make a little bit extra revenue. Uh -huh. Everybody today is looking for side hustles. Yeah. It seems like a weird economic time, but shockingly, people are still buying things. Yeah. People are still spending money on things that you may not understand. I have a hard time with paying someone to take pictures of my family. Mm -hmm. It seems weird to me. Which is why we still haven't got like full family pictures together. No, but other people are more than willing to do yes. it <laughs> all the time. Yes. You yes. know, and so that's just one of those things. But um, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up unless you've got anything else that you want to no. throw in on any of that. Uh, I don't. I kind of want to read Philippians 4, 10 through 13, because I had somebody ask me about Philippians 4, 13, uh, either last week or this week at work. I can't remember. I guess mm -hmm. it was last week because they had saw a fight. This person's a non-Christian mm -hmm. and they had seen a fight uh, where the guy had like either it was on his like he was somewhere on him. I don't know if it was on like his shorts or something, mm -hmm. but it had Philippians 4, 13, which is a very common verse. It says that I, for I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And people grossly take that verse out of context. Yes. And so I just wanted to share that verse with the context because I think very few people hear the context. And mm -hmm. that's why that guy asked me about it. He, we have a, you know, a dialogue going about the Bible and he always brings me all these questions about like how people are misusing it that even as a non-Christian he can mm -hmm. see. Uh, because the idea that God's giving you strength to beat somebody up in a fight, obviously there's some, some falsehood in that. Yeah. And that's the same for any sport. God... Mm -hmm empowering one football team to win over the other football team is a little weird. Yeah. Like praying before a football game is great mm -hmm. when you're praying for the right thing, yeah. but praying to win use God's favor for one team or the other just is a little odd. And God giving you the strength to excel in a sport that doesn't glorify him mm -hmm. traditionally is a little odd. Yeah. Anyways. So Philippians four ten through 13, I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know that it is to be in need. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Mm -hmm. So that's Paul speaking to the church in Philippi. And in the context, you can see that he's not saying that God strengthens him to do anything, but that God gives him the strength to overcome basically any situation, whether he's hungry, whether he's fed, 
whether he has plenty or he's in need of things, God gives him the strength to carry on. And that's what God's doing for us. He's not giving us the strength to, you know, beat somebody up or these mm-hmm. different accolades for ourselves. Yep. But he's giving us the strength to keep going no matter what we face for the purpose of sharing his gospel, because that's what Paul made his whole life about. It wasn't about Paul excelling in life, but mm-hmm. it was about Jesus excelling through Paul. And that's kind of what the purpose of our life should be. And that's why we take this last little bit of our podcast to share a little Bible with you every week. Yeah. But we hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. Please, if you like this, give us a like, subscribe to us either on YouTube or on the podcast. Hopefully there'll be different YouTube videos coming out soon, maybe yeah. shorts or something. Something. To add additional content. Follow us on social media and we'll catch you guys in the next episode. God bless.